Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The 100, the seventh and final season. Remember last season ended on a cliffhanger as the gang had just activated Sanctum's weird alien orb. The anomaly opened up and this random new girl came through and immediately stabbed Octavia, which warped her out of there. Now an invisible force grabs Bellamy and pulls him through the anomaly, so Echo, Gabriel, and the new girl chase after him. Meanwhile, back in Sanctum, our crew's trying to hold a piece together as the Sanctumites and the children of Gabriel have been at war for a hundred years. Everyone still thinks John Murphy and Amori are two of the resurrected primes, so they're able to keep the peace for now, although they have to remember to stay in character, they were not dating, they were brother and sister. The only real prime left is Russell, and Clark's gonna let him live to keep the peace, until he reminds her how he snatched her mom's body and forced her to blow her out the airlock. Yeah, Clark's still pretty mad about that, decides to burn the palace down, and Russell's gonna be executed. But something unexpected happens, because inside Russell's mind drive is Shade Hada, the Dark Commander. Remember, he tried to possess Maddie last season, so they had to take the flame out, but not before he managed to email himself over to Russell's mind drive. And now he kills Russell in the mind space and snatches his body. Now the anomaly crew gets spit out in the middle of a lake on a brand new planet, and the new girl reveals she is Hope Dioza, Colonel Dioza's daughter, and this is where she grew up. Remember last season, Dioza went into the anomaly, and Octavia followed a few seconds later, but then a few seconds after that came on back with no memory of what happened. Turns out time passes much slower on this planet, because when Octavia arrived, Dioza had already built the cabin and was giving birth to baby Hope. Octavia kept trying to get back to the anomaly at the bottom of the lake, but it's just too deep, so she ended up spending six years happily retired with Dioza and Hope. Until one day, the anomaly activated, and some crazy spacesuit dudes came through. They hid Hope but the adults were captured, leaving Hope all alone. But soon some random other guy showed up. Turns out that civilization uses this planet as a prison since you can serve a 10 year sentence in just a few minutes. He became a father figure to Hope, taught her how to fight, so when they came back to pick him up, he'd help her ambush him and rescue her mom and Auntie O. But oh, he got stabbed, so Hope had to go it alone. Now when Octavia and Dioza were captured, they were brought to the home planet Bardo. They hooked Octavia up to a memory machine where she was worked on by this kinda hot and nice guy. Through her memories, he did a full series rewatch and now has kind of a huge crush on her. So when a grown up Hope arrived to rescue her in what had been relatively just a few hours, memory guy helped him escape. Hope stayed behind to save her mom, they sent Octavia first, which is why she arrived back on Sanctum in relatively just a few seconds. Hope got caught though, but managed to make a deal where they'd spare her mother if she went back to Sanctum and stabbed Octavia with the tracking teleportation knife. But now they're back to square one. Dioza, Octavia, and Bellamy now are prisoners, and they're trapped on this planet with no way off. Luckily, there's another prisoner here now, and he only has five years on his sentence, so in the blink of an eye, five years pass. When they come to pick him up, they're ambushed again, and even though they made friends with this guy over five years, Echo doesn't know if they can trust him, so they leave him there while they go to assault Bardo. Now the civilization here is called the Disciples and they're a crazy religious cult who worships the shepherd and they're all jazzed up about the last war. They find Octavia again, but what happened to Bellamy? Well, when he was first picked up, he tried to fight and a grenade went off. Oh, Bellamy exploded. Nah, I'm not buying it. I'll believe Bellamy's dead for real after he and Clark make out furiously and I see his cold dead body bleeding out on the floor. His girlfriend Echo though is pretty upset. Elsewhere, Dios is a prisoner, but she's a badass, manages to escape with nothing but a spoon. She and her daughter are briefly reunited, but the rescue attempt fails, they're all captured. Now. So now these disciples finally warp to Sanctum. They all have cloaking devices, by the way, and they're like, hey, Clark, we're not here to fight. Actually, we need your help. But Master Engineer Raven Reyes got one of their helmets and sees that they're actually trying to capture Clark, so she goes and ambushes the ambush. So now Clark and crew are going to rescue their friends, but there's a whole bunch of planets connected by these wormholes, and they guess wrong at first. Eventually, they make it to Bardo, and this is big news for them, so they wake up the Shepherd. Yeah, he's not a mythological figure, he's just a real dude named Bill. In fact, Clark recognizes him. He is Bill Cadigan, the cult leader of the Second Dawn, who built the bunker where most of humanity survived the second nuclear apocalypse. Yes, we actually get a flashback now to the original nuclear apocalypse, where the members of the Second Dawn did survive in their bunker. After a bit, as you may remember, genius scientist Becca Franco came back to Earth, designer of Ali and the Flame, and the Nightblood formula that makes you immune to radiation. Bill Cadigan wasn't interested in living on the irradiated Earth, because he had just found the alien orb on Earth, and was convinced it would lead them to salvation. Unfortunately, he had no idea how to turn it on, but Becca Franco did, because of the AI in her head, she could like hear which symbols would activate it. In fact, one combination of symbols sounded super special, and it turned into a white portal that, boom, she went into for just a second, but came out, wouldn't talk about what happened, but was like, Bill Cadigan can't go in there. Bill burned her at the stake to get the flame and thus the combination, but his daughter liked Becca and so took the flame, gave a bunch of people the Nightblood formula, and they became the first grounders. Meanwhile, Bill led his people through a normal green portal, which apparently led them to Bardo, where he became the shepherd and survived this long by cryo-sleeping through most of it. But now he thinks he finally has a white portal combination because he thinks the flame is in Clark's head. Yeah, I guess Octavia's memory showed when she put it in briefly, but never when she took it out. So Clark's like, yeah, sure, got the flame. I'll help you out if you let my friends go. But the friends have now been converted into disciples. You see, they've translated the ancient Bardoan texts, and it says when you open the white portal, it begins the last war. And if you win, you transcend, but if you lose, you're wiped out. So the disciples think they're the good guys going to save humanity, and that's why their catchphrase is... For all mankind. 
for all mankind. When Clark talks to Octavia alone, though, it's like, hey, so you guys are faking, right? And it's like, oh yeah, most definitely. Although Octavia was not faking when she hooked up with Memory Guy. Yeah, it's been like a decade since she last got laid. But turns out Echo has a plan right now to genocide the whole gang of them. She's gonna put the bioweapon in the water supply. She's real mad they killed her boyfriend Bellamy. But Clark's like, hey girl, I've been there. Genocide's not the answer. They managed to talk her down, but Hope is still mad. She kills this guy, grabs the bioweapon, goes to put it in, but oh, stopped by her mom. Not to save the disciples, but to save her daughter from repeating her mistakes of committing mass murder. These shenanigans have made things pretty tense, so Clark's like, hey, just let all my friends go and I'll give you the code. But there's a new player. It's Bellamy Blake. He survived. Yes, Clark and me is back on the table. Except, of course, Echo's like, yo, that's literally my boyfriend. Clark fills Bellamy in on how she's bluffing about still having the flame, but he immediately tattles on her. Bellamy, what happened to you? Well, as you might have guessed, he didn't explode. He was blown through a portal, but not back to Sanctum, to some whole other planet. A disciple got blown through with him, and at first they fought, but to get to the teleportation stone, they needed to work together to climb this mountain. A huge blizzard came through, forced him to take shelter in this cave, and months went by. Bellamy grew out an awesome mountain beard. This guy was praying to the shepherd every dang day. It's like, hey, what could it hurt? Just try once. And the very first time he tries to pray, he has a vision of the shepherd, and the storm clears. Yeah, he's a believer now. So they make a deal where most of the friends will be collateral on another planet, while Clark takes him to Sanctum to get the flame for real. But when they arrive back on Sanctum, they find that things have changed quite a bit. Long story short, Russell eventually revealed that he's Shade Hada now, and most of the grounders are accustomed to following their commander, no question. Indra tried to rally one crew against him, but it came down to an old-fashioned grounder combat. Indra was about to lose when, what's this? It's Maddie! Arya starking her way in, slashed his eye. He was gonna kill her, though, so Indra surrendered and knelt to spare Maddie's life, and Shade Hada took over Sanctum. Bill's like, wow, cool story, bro, but we have laser guns and cloaking devices, so just gonna ignore you. Clark hands over the flame, but taking it out of Maddie damaged it, so Gabriel's gotta fix it. But earlier, Jordan was reviewing the translations, and because of his knowledge of Korean, figured out that they had it wrong. It's not a last war, it's a last test. Gabriel knows that Cadigan's not a good guy. He should not take the test to represent all of humanity, and so destroys the flame for good. In the confusion, our crew gets the upper hand. They have Cadigan send him to where their friends are waiting. But knowledge of the flame may not be gone for good because Maddie's been drawing her memories of it, and Bellamy finds the book that shows she may know the code to open the white portal. Protecting Maddie is Clark's number one priority, so she points her gun at Bellamy. He's like, Clark, please trust me on this. It's for the good of all mankind. Plus, you're not gonna shoot me. But Clark does! Oh, Clark shoots Bellamy! That was her last bullet, so Clark doesn't even get the journal. She has to portal out of there. And I know what I said before about his cold dead body bleeding out on the ground, but I mean, they're gonna Jon Snow him somehow, right? So on the other side of the portal, what planet is this? They're in the bunker. They're back on an irradiated Earth. Except, turns out, it's not so irradiated. Yeah, in the hundred years or so, they were in cryosleep. Earth bounced back. They start planning a way back, but Clark has a different idea. She's like, hey, all the main characters are here. Let's just stay on Earth and start over. This goes well for a little bit. The youngest members of the group, Jordan and Hope, strike up a romance. But the shepherd's not giving up. For some reason, Shadeda doesn't have those memories, but he makes a deal to go get Maddie for him. So as Maddie and Gabriel are playing the piano, oh, Gabriel stabbed by invisible Shadeda. Turns into a big fight in the fighting pits. Shadeda's gonna lose, so he stabs himself with the tracker knife, pieces out. But Gabriel does die, and Maddie feels bad. No one else is gonna die for me. Grabs the tracker knife, stabs herself. Boom, warped out of there. Just then, someone else is coming through the portal. It's a bomb! Miller, who I've never mentioned before because he's kind of a minor character, even though he is part of the original 100, has been there since the beginning. He gets the MVP award here for jumping into action when everyone else freezes and gets the bomb locked away. It does cause a collapse, though, and Amori is grievously injured. Jackson works to stabilize her. I've never mentioned him before either, but he is the doctor, has been around since the very beginning, and is incidentally Miller's boyfriend. But it's too late! Amori has died! But actually, it's not necessarily the end for Amori. She and Murphy do have their mind drives in. They're not about to body snatch someone, but if they put her mind drive into Murphy's, they can hang out in the mind space. It won't last long. Two minds sharing a body will end up killing them both, but Murphy doesn't care. He doesn't want to live without her. In fact, Murphy's arc has been completed this season, from the selfish cockroach who would do anything to survive, to putting himself in danger multiple times to save other people. Now, the disciples are getting the memories from Maddie, but they're buried way down there. It'll be super dangerous to dig, but the shepherd's like, I don't care, do it. And memory guy's starting to think that he's on the wrong side. So he teleports Clark and Octavia. They bust in to save Maddie, but they're too late. She's still alive, but she is brain dead. There's no time to grieve, though. They did get the combination. So enraged by Maddie's death, Clark goes into full Juan mode, commander of death. Meanwhile, the Disciple Army is ready for the last war, but it's just Jordan who comes through with an EMP backpack, shuts down all their fancy tech. Then the rest of the grounders bust through, ready to fight if necessary. Now Cadigan has activated the white portal, and it brings him to uh, some nice, fancy, spacey place. There he meets his daughter, but it's not really her, it's just the form she's taking. This is, apparently, a hyper-advanced alien species that has transcended their mortal bodies and become beings of pure light. When a species gets advanced enough to figure out the orb, they give them a test to see if they deserve to transcend with them or be exterminated. 
Cadigan's all amped up to start the test when, oh, shot in the head! Oh man, hardcore Clark! Pencils down. They switch appearances for Clark and now show up as Lexa, all right. But it's like, hey Clark, we've read your memories and I know you think you've done everything to save your friends, but uh, you're not a good person. But Clark's like, hold up, who are you to judge me? Creepy alien wiping out entire species because they don't pass your test? Go float yourself. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the answer they were looking for and humanity has failed. The sphere turns red, which is not a good sign, but Raven Reyes figures, hey, maybe I can get a retest? For Raven, the being appears as Abby, who is Clark's mother, but Raven's mentor. It's like, hey, sorry, no retakes, but Raven convinces him to give him one more shot. She warps Raven to the field where the last of humanity is ready to kill each other and Raven's like, look, but they haven't yet. Give him a chance. Indeed, Memory Guy comes out right now to be like, hey, everyone stand down. This is not the way, but Shade Hata's in the woods like, yeah, no, it is. Boom shoots him, which sets off the shooting. But Indra does what she should have done at the beginning of the season and blows him up. This causes enough of a break in the fighting for Octavia to come out and gives an impassioned speech. We are all one crew. We can't be killing each other. And the grounders all follow her lead. The disciples have no idea what's going on, so they put their guns down, and humanity maybe deserves to be saved. They start glowing. What the heck? I guess it's they're literally transcending. Yes, everyone's glowing. Turns into spirits of light. It's the literal rapture. Luckily, Maddie's alive enough. She counts and transcends too, but uh, Clark is left behind. She heads back to Earth, ready to live out her days as the last human in the universe. But the dog runs away. Is someone else here? Is it Bellamy? Can they finally get together? Adam and Eve in it? But no, it's just fake alien Lexa again. She explains that humanity's having a great time being transcended, but some of them decided not to stay. And indeed, waiting for her on Earth are all our main characters. They said transcendence is for dummies. We're hanging out with Clark on Earth. So it's a weird ending with humanity transcending, but a happy one for our crew, except of course for the glaring absence of Bellamy. But in any case, our hundred survivors are down to a dozen restarting life on Earth, and that's how the hundred comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you love this recap, hit the join button to support the channel as a member.